Starship's Flight 8 was expected to perform much better than it did. After the explosive ending of Flight 7, many thought SpaceX had figured out the problem and that this flight would be flawless. But that was not the case. Flight 8 also ended in an explosion. When such incidents happen, we all know how the FAA responds, often imposing strict measures on space companies over even minor incidents. Now, the FAA has released a statement regarding the Starship explosion, and we will break it down in this video. Before we get into the details, make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates. Flight 8 started as expected, with a smooth liftoff. The Super Heavy Booster's 33 Raptor engines fired up, and the vehicle cleared the launch pad without any issues. It passed through Max Q, the most stressful part of the ascent, with no problems. Everything looked normal. Stage separation happened as planned. The hot staging method worked, with the upper stage igniting its engines while detaching from the booster. Starship continued its climb, while the booster began its descent back to the launch site. The booster executed its descent burn and reoriented itself for landing. SpaceX successfully caught the Super Heavy booster using Mechazilla's robotic arms. However, the upper stage was meanwhile experiencing problems. Shortly after separation, one of the vacuum engines failed, followed by issues with three sea-level engines. Shortly after, three sea-level engines lost thrust, creating an imbalance that made the vehicle unstable. Footage from the engine compartment showed small fires on two Raptor vacuum engines, while the sea-level engines exhibited abnormal airflow behavior, suggesting a potential fuel or oxidizer leak. This failure closely resembled what happened in Flight 7, where an engine anomaly led to the vehicle losing stability and breaking apart before reaching its intended trajectory. However, in Flight 7, the issue was primarily with Starship's attitude control, which resulted in an aerodynamic failure at high altitude. In contrast, Flight 8's failure originated within the propulsion system, causing a thrust imbalance that led to loss of control. Another similarity between the two flights was the fate of the upper stage. Both starships failed before achieving their planned re-entry, exploding mid-flight due to their structural and engine issues. However, Flight 8 exploded closer to the shore, making it more visible from locations such as Cape Canaveral, the Bahamas, and the Turks and Caicos Islands. This proximity to land raised concerns about potential debris scattering into populated areas. A key difference between the Flight 7 and Flight 8 missions was the progress SpaceX made with Mechazilla's catching mechanism. In Flight 8, SpaceX successfully utilized Mechazilla to recover the booster, marking another step forward in their efforts toward rapid reusability. While the upper stage still failed, this aspect of the mission demonstrated continued improvement in booster recovery, something that wasn't attempted in Flight 7. After the recent flight, the FAA issued an official statement requiring SpaceX to investigate the loss of Starship during launch operations on March 6. The agency also activated a debris monitoring protocol, briefly slowing down aircraft in the area where debris was falling and, in some cases, holding aircraft at departure locations for safety reasons. This is not the first time the FAA has stepped in after a Starship test failure. One of the most notable instances was after the high-altitude test flight, which ended in an explosion upon landing. The FAA launched an investigation and temporarily grounded Starship launches, delaying SpaceX's schedule. Another major grounding happened after Starship's first fully integrated flight on April 20, 2023, when Flight 1 ended in a mid-air explosion. The FAA required a thorough review before allowing the next flight, leading to a nearly seven-month delay before Flight 2 could take place in November 2023. The relationship between SpaceX and the FAA has been strained for years, largely due to regulatory delays. Musk has publicly criticized the agency multiple times, calling its pace of approval too slow for rapid development. In 2021, after the FAA delayed the launch of SN9, Musk tweeted that the FAA's space division has a fundamentally broken regulatory structure. He has argued that traditional aerospace regulations are designed for low-frequency launches and that the FAA needs to adapt to SpaceX's fast-paced testing schedule. 
Musk has repeatedly pushed for a more streamlined process that would allow SpaceX to iterate faster without waiting for lengthy investigations after every failure. Now, with another investigation underway after Flight 8, SpaceX must again work with the FAA to determine the cause of the failure. In a statement on X, the company confirmed that Starship experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly during ascent and that contact was lost. SpaceX is reviewing the flight data to understand the root cause while coordinating with safety officials to implement pre-planned contingency measures. Despite these setbacks, SpaceX is pushing forward. Flight 9 remains on track, as no major regulatory changes are required for the mission. Since Starship is still planned to land in the ocean rather than attempt a landing, no modifications are needed for the existing launch license. This allows SpaceX to focus on addressing technical problems rather than dealing with additional regulatory hurdles. The FAA has streamlined its approval process in recent months, meaning if the investigation is resolved quickly, SpaceX could get approval for Flight 9 within a month, targeting an April launch. Flight 10 will be the first attempt to catch the upper stage using the Mechazilla arms, rather than just the booster. This is a major step toward full reusability. Unlike previous flights, which focused on booster recovery, Flight 10 aims to demonstrate a controlled descent of the upper stage, paving the way for future land-based recoveries. However, this attempt has been pushed back to allow for further tower upgrades and refinements. In terms of hardware, upcoming flights will use upgraded prototypes. Flight 9 will feature Booster 11 and Ship 30, while Flight 10 is expected to use Booster 12 and Ship 31, both incorporating refinements based on the failures of previous flights. These upgrades include more robust heat shielding, improved Raptor engines, and better fuel management systems. It's not only Starship, SpaceX has also been making major strides with its Falcon 9 rocket. As of March 2025, Falcon 9 has completed over 350 successful launches, maintaining its status as the most frequently used rocket in history. In 2024, SpaceX set an industry record with 121 Falcon 9 launches, averaging more than two launches per week. Now, in 2025, the company is on track to break its own record, with over 30 launches already completed in the first three months of the year. The biggest factor behind Falcon 9's success is its extreme reusability. The most flown booster in SpaceX's fleet, B-1062, has now completed 22 flights, proving the effectiveness of rapid refurbishment and reuse. Several other boosters have flown more than 17 times. SpaceX continues to push for faster turnaround times, with some Falcon 9 boosters being relaunched in less than 20 days after a previous mission. Falcon 9 has also been the workhorse for the Starlink program, helping SpaceX build out the world's largest satellite constellation. The company has launched over 7,500 Starlink satellites, expanding global internet coverage and securing billions in revenue. The latest Starlink Vi-2 mini satellites have improved capabilities, providing faster speeds and better service to customers worldwide. Beyond Starlink, Falcon 9 remains the go-to rocket for NASA missions. The Crew-9 mission successfully launched in February 2025. SpaceX is now preparing for Crew-10, scheduled for launch in mid-2025, further cementing its role in human spaceflight. Falcon 9 has also continued supporting NASA's Commercial Resupply Services program. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.